Hey everyone, this is John Stearns from Zoom, and this is an updated demonstration of our Zoom virtual kiosk solution. Now, I published a video a couple of years ago when we first launched this, and I, I noticed that there were still people going back to that video to learn how to set up kiosks. There's been a lot of uh, changes and enhancements to the solution, so I figured I'd record a new video showing some of the new capabilities. Uh, we even just got some brand new functionality in 5.13 a couple weeks ago in early December. Um, so I'll showcase all the new stuff and all the new experiences here. I'll start off here. Uh, I have a virtual kiosk running on a D10Me. Um, you'll notice that the same device can run as a hot desk, a personal Zoom room, and I've got it set up as a virtual kiosk here. Now we're gonna get into the different functionality and configurations, but just from a very high level, uh, we look at a completely branded solution here. So I picked the background image, I picked the logo in the top uh, left there, and I wrote, welcome to Zoom Spaces. You can, you can write that header however you want. And then we see a couple of buttons on here. So you can set, set up a couple of different applications on a virtual kiosk. You can set it up as a virtual receptionist type kiosk where you would actually connect to someone live, or you can set it up as a workspace kiosk, uh, which allows your employees or users to walk up to the touch screen. They can view an interactive floor map, they can see conference room availability, desk availability. They can make reservations right from the kiosk itself. So we'll show all of that. Just in general, the receptionist button is on the left. Go ahead and tap that. We'll notice that I've configured uh, six buttons here, uh, each with the, its own custom logo or icon. Uh, we will talk about those. Uh, each of those would route to different groups of people behind the scenes, depending on you know who, who uh, the user wanted to get connected to. So it could be uh, reception, it could be a virtual IT support kiosk, it could be deliveries, you know, for, for external folks trying to get in the building to drop off FedEx or uh, UPS deliveries, uh, could be an emergency button, you know, that type of thing. And then the other button here is the workspace uh, reservation kiosk. So this will bring up the floor map of the floor that this kiosk is sitting on. I can see uh, all the availability of the conference rooms uh, noted in green. Uh, red showcases uh, busy rooms, and then we see even desks that are uh, on there. And I could walk up to the kiosk itself and tap on a room to get more information. If I wanted to book it, I could see a picture, capacity, the uh, equipment that's in the room. Or in the case of a desk, I could go ahead and book a specific desk here, which would prompt me as a user uh, to scan that QR code. So when I make that desk reservation, it's personalized to my my Zoom profile as a user. So when I go to book it, you know, and reserve that desk uh, and check into it, it will personalize the experience. Let me go ahead and uh, just show you the experience there. So let me go ahead and scan that QR code so it knows that I am the one making the reservation. Ask me what I like to reserve it. Yes, and I'll go ahead. And what we see immediately is that this hot desk, which was the desk I was reserving on the map, now shows red. Uh, the, the lighting is a little tough to see on the screen, um, but we can see reserved across the bottom. We can see it's reserved by me, shows my profile, shows the time I reserved it for, and then it prompts me as, as the user to scan that QR code as well. So when I walk over, I get situated at my desk, scan that quick QR code. Would you like to check in? I've checked in, authenticated myself as a user. It will ask, do I want to set up a pin right now? set that up for later in case I want to go out to lunch or something like that and secure the system. But now it has checked me into this as essentially my personal Zoom uh, room system or my Zoom experience. So if I'm working here for an hour or for the full day, uh, it's nice and easy to go ahead and um, see all my meetings, my contacts, my Zoom phone line is, is connected to that device, my whiteboards, and anything that's associated with my Zoom profile is then connected to that hot desk. So that's the workspace reservation experience uh, as part of the kiosk. What we'll do next is we'll go ahead and jump into the admin portal just to see how simple it is to set up a virtual kiosk, as well as uh, you know some of the configuration and customization options. So I'm in the admin portal here. So I'm an admin of just a personal sandbox I maintain. I'm going to go down to Zoom Rooms under Room Management. It's going to show all my Zoom Rooms here, but there's an Add Room button right at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Um, anytime you're setting up a new Zoom room system, the very first thing you choose is the room type. 
So if it's just a regular Zoom room, that's going to go into a shared conference room. Uh, you choose that top option. Obviously, we see kiosk here, uh, but you also get the ability to set up a personal Zoom room system that would be dedicated to a specific user. Um, scheduling display only room. If you only wanted to put a display outside of that room to be able to walk up and reserve it, uh, digital signage only uh, displays, standalone whiteboards. So different types of uh, use cases there. In the case of kiosk, I'll go ahead and choose that. I'll call it test kiosk. And I could choose where specifically in the hierarchy do I want that placed? You know, if I've got global locations, go down to the country, uh, the state, the city, the building, the floor, et cetera. Um, I'm just going to choose this to go into my uh, sandbox floor, which is the Stearns Flex Work Zone. I'll finish that. And we will go down to that specific device here, which I called Test Kiosk. And we'll see that it spits out a 16 digit activation code right here. So if I just powered this D10 system on, um, the first thing it would ask me for is you know, to log into the system punch that 16 digit code in that will completely provision this brand new device as my test virtual kiosk. Now for the interest of time, I'm gonna hop down to the actual um, virtual kiosk I have set up already here. So I'll jump into that kiosk. I'm gonna jump over to the kiosk tab on that. And this is where we see the um, customization right in the admin portal of how I set up that device behind me. So starting from the top here, I can see, uh, you know, that's where I would go ahead and change out an image. If I wanted to put my company logo or a specific icon in the top left, I can decide uh, what I want that header to say. So I can just say, uh, welcome to the demo. Welcome to Zoom, welcome to Zoom Spaces, well, welcome to Acme Company. Uh, so we can write whatever we want. I'm gonna just put that back to welcome to Zoom Spaces. And then we get down to the two uh, customizable buttons here. So we can run virtual reception on it. We can run the workspace kiosk, or, or you could run both of them. So you get the ability there. You can check which, which apps you want to run on it. And then as I jump down here, I'm going to go ahead and click on the receptionist button to dive a little bit more deep into um, the various buttons that are associated with that. So this is if you want people, whether they're internal or external guests, uh, to actually go in there and that you want to give them an easy button to get connected to different departments, this is how you would set that up. Now I've set up a button for each kind of product that's part of the Zoom spaces. So just Zoom rooms, workspace, et cetera. But these could be reception, IT support, human resources, you know, facilities, any, any groups of people that you want to make it easy for folks to get connected to. When you go in and customize each of these buttons, you go ahead and click on that button. Um, you can use the, the uh, kiosk solution. There's a lot of functionality built in, or you can actually take it a step further and integrate it into your uh, Zoom contact center. Uh, you get different uh, capabilities there. That would allow you to do more sophisticated call routing, um, you know, call queues and uh, skills-based routing and stuff like that. But uh, the core product here allows me to add up to four contacts that would be associated with each button. So if someone walks up and hits reception, there could be four virtual receptionists anywhere in the world that would uh, you know, then be able to, to field those calls. And I can call that button, whatever I want it uh, to be called. And then there's some out of the box icons. So different colors and icon choices here uh, that you could use, or you could go over to the right here and upload your own image. And that's where I've uploaded that kind of Zoom Rooms icon image. Uh, but you could upload any image there that would be uh, represented there as that, um, as that uh, button icon. So I've set six custom icons up, six custom buttons, each with up to four people that would uh, field those calls. So I'll go ahead and hit done there. Um, I can change the background image of the kiosk. Uh, that's very easy to do. I can go ahead and preview what this would look like, uh, including um, you know, showing both buttons. If I wanted to go ahead and go back into the six uh, virtual reception buttons and preview those, I can see what that's gonna look like on the actual UI. The last thing I have here are some controls that I wanna set as a, um, as a user or guest or visitor or employee as I walk up and initiate a call in the virtual kiosk to either reception or IT support. There'll be, uh, it'll obviously launch a call on the kiosk side, very simple, I'll be connected over video, but I, do, I can enable a few buttons on those 
if we want to allow the user to mute themselves, uh, stop their video, or uh, add participants into that call if necessary. So um, nice and easy. This, that's, that's really it. Uh, super simple to go ahead and set these all up. And uh, you get the full brandable, full customizable virtual kiosk solution. It captures or leverages a um, single Zoom Room license for each kiosk. So it runs basically a modified version of that Zoom Room software. Um, so no special licensing or additional add-ons that you need to buy just beyond that, that normal Zoom Room license. And uh, you can set these up for uh, whatever you need it for. Um, you know, lo lots of different use cases, uh, you know, to bring this into corporate offices, branches, you know, if you need to bring um, subject matter experts in. Um, so a lot of functionality there. And the, the integration into workspace reservation so I could set that up as a kiosk, really opens up even more use cases for this. It can be run on any hardware that supports uh, Zoom Room for touch. So there's some good small form factor uh, devices like the D10Me. It's a 27 inch all-in-one capacitive touch screen, uh, but I could also run it on this uh, D10 55 inch system or a neat board or a neat frame. So a lot of different options here, even this, uh, Lenovo Think Smart View, which can be set up as a uh, portrait mode or um, or uh, landscape mode, that can run uh, the virtual kiosk. You could run it on an iPad. Um, so a lot of different uh, you know form factors that this can take. Very simple to set up the Zoom virtual kiosk. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Lots more to come here as well. Um, so go ahead and subscribe. Uh, you know, comment, like, uh, reach out if you have any questions on the on the virtual kiosk. And um, I'll go make sure to record a new video once we've added more functionality over the next couple quarters as well. Thanks and have a great day.